Hey guys, this is Colton File from West Weldon Academy. Today we're gonna to be looking at stingers that are the best for beginners. We're gonna be ranking these stingers out of three criterias, durability, hand comfort, performance. All right, so we have the Tweeco right here, $30 every day on Amazon. This is a great stinger. It's insulated. They're pretty cost efficient. So it's something great to start off with. They are insulated, so you don't have to worry about laying it down on your material and arcing out on nothing. And a lot of jobs do require insulated stingers. This one right here is actually a 200 amp stinger and they make them all the way to like 600 amps. So they do get bigger as you go on. They can handle more amperages. Pretty much just a great all around stinger. They do wear out quite fast, I feel like. What you'll find is that the teeth inside here, they give you your different grooves. Roofs. They'll end up wearing out or they'll arc out and they'll put BBs in there. Also your insulation kit on the top and the bottom, they will also start to wear out. They become loose. As you can tell this one right here, it actually is just a little bit loose already. It's just a Phillips head screw, so you can tighten her back up pretty easy until they get full of BBs and they're kind of a pain. But uh, if you throw them on the ground, the insulator will break. But yeah, pretty good all around stinger. All right, so as I mentioned prior, these have teeth in them. They have nice little grooves that hold your welding rod in there. So they're pretty good. I mean, they do a pretty good job. A lot of guys like to bend their rods, especially if they're welding overhead. But if you start putting a lot of pressure on them, they'll start to move. Or if you don't quite have it clicked in there all the way, what you'll find is you'll start welding and then that rod will snap down on you. And then, Boom, now you left an arc mark on there. Durability on the Tweeco, I would say it's a good seven out of 10, pretty trusty. Uh, hand comfort, eh, it's a little small, got big hands, not a huge fan. Grip comfort, probably a five. For performance on this Stinger, great way to get started. You know, get, get the job done for sure. Probably give it an eight. We have the V Stinger, which is $120. These are actually made here in Wyoming, and uh, they're a pretty new option, honestly. They've only been out for probably 10 to 15 years, somewhere around that ballpark. Great Stinger. Uh, you'll see a lot of rig welders use these, especially when they're doing fabrication. This one is also insulated. It's got a nice big grip on it, nice tight spring, and you don't have to worry about your rod twisting in there either, because I mean, it locks in right in place right there. So once it's in there, it's in there. It's not coming out. The bad thing about these Stingers, same thing. You throw them down on the ground, this insulation kit that's on top of them, it will break. Luckily, V-Stinger was smart enough and they actually do sell a replacement kit. That way when you break your insulation kit, but your stinger's still good, you can just spend, I guess, like 30, 40 bucks, get your new insulation kit. Like I said, this is my preferred choice if I'm doing fabrication in a shop. If they require an insulated stinger, this is the one I'm gonna buy, just because it's a little bigger, I got big hands, and it's way more comfortable. It's not my personal choice, but a lot of guys are switching over to them, is once you put that rod in there it's not moving there's no place for it to go the hole completely closes up and i believe it'll run all the way up to a five mil or a quarter inch rod so your hole is pretty big don't have to worry about it too much unless you're burning some major stuff and this is a 300 amp stinger so anything more than that probably gonna get something bigger anyway grip comfort pretty nice probably give this a nine nice and big and uh fits my hands good don't feel like i have to death grip it by no means durability uh you know that this insulation kit is just pretty fragile if you throw it down probably I give it a seven on that, but it is replaceable. So maybe we bump it up to a 7.5. Performance on this V-Stinger, I mean, they're pretty hard to beat. Uh, I'd probably give this a 10 out of 10. Like you're gonna have a hard time finding something that's gonna beat it, unless you're mainlining and you're trying to get quick and fast about it, just cause you have to look for that little hole when you reload your rods. So 9.5. We have the T300, $80 right now on Amazon. This is a stinger that 90% of pipeliners use. A lot of pipeliners are switching over to the V stinger, but this is the tried and true and always been always been tested and loved. The reason pipeliners use these the majority of the time, one, most companies do supply new stingers and this is the option that they supply you with. I prefer these stingers on my truck. This is what I currently run and they're super handy, especially if you know you wear out your stinger, but the stinger's still in pretty good shape. The springs Week or something, you can just swap it over to your ground side, and so you always have a backup. Uh, if you're trying to run straight polarity or reverse polarity, you know, a lot of guys will use this as a ground clamp, so this also works really good. Same thing, you know, it's got teeth in here that will eventually wear out. Uh, this one I've had for quite a while. You can see it's got a little bit of play in it, which ain't bad. This one right here is my preferred choice, but it's not insulated, so you have to be very mindful of where you lay this down. Make sure your helper knows, hey, don't mess with that stinger, don't throw it over the pipe, because you will arc out on your whatever you 
you're working on and then you will cause some serious money damages. Also in the T300, a lot of guys beat them with a hammer, get a nice tight grip, the rod won't come out of there. However, if you're aiming for that 45 degree slot and you miss and you start welding and it clicks down in there, boom, same thing, arcs out. Uh, especially if you bend your rods, you'll see it a lot where guys don't quite have them in there all the way and then they'll snap down into place. Just something to keep in mind as you're welding and you're picking out what stinger works best for you. Durability for this T300, I mean, I'm gonna have to give it a 10 out of 10. They're pretty hard to mess up, pretty hard to break. You can beat on it with a hammer and get it back to where you need and they'll last you a good six months if you use them every day, all day, 10 hours a day. Uh, hand size, I got a lot of tape wrapped around this right now, so it's a little bit smaller than that V-Stinger. However, I do like the extra grip on it, so I'd probably give this one a nine. As long as you wrap tape around it, you probably get a 10 out of that. Performance out of this T300, uh, I'm probably gonna have to give it a nine also. Just for the simple fact that if the teeth wear out, your rod could twist in there. Good way to get art marks. And uh, it's not tight, not well maintained. You can have some problems out of it. By far, this is my favorite stinger out of the three choices. So like I said before, this right here is by far my favorite choice, the T300. Kind of in the middle of your price range, running between $30, $120 and $80. So right there in the middle, the durability, pretty great. You're gonna get a long lifetime out of it. As long as you're not working on an insulated job where you have to have an insulated stinger, this would be my choice every day of the week. All right, so now we've tested all these stingers. We'll put them all to the test. What stinger do you guys personally have on your trucks right now? Which one do you prefer out in the field? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget, go to applytoweld.com. That way it's not just a daily tip, it's an everyday tip.